All right, let's talk offensive lines. And it's the running joke on this channel that every uh, fan base believes that their offensive line is either the best in football or a bottom five offensive line in football, right? Because you always want to blame the offensive line when things don't go well. But there can only be 10 bottom 10 offensive lines in football. These are my predictions for the bottom 10 offensive lines in football heading into the 2023 season. Number 10, I have the San Francisco 49ers, which seems insane to have an offensive line with Trent Williams as a bottom 10 offensive line in football. But the reality is, I don't know if I love really any of the other four players with Aaron Banks, uh, you know, Spencer uh, Burford. Also, they had uh, they brought in uh, Colton uh, McKivitz and John Feliciano. Those are guys who should be starting, uh, you know, this season that weren't starting last season for them. Uh, and I don't know exactly uh, how much I love any of those four options. Williams should be good. But the reality is you do trust San Francisco to figure it out. But as of right now, I'm a little concerned about the other four options. So uh, still 10 because, again, you can't, can't be that high on the list if you have Trent Williams. But there's some concerns here. Number nine is the Seattle Seahawks, who are a team that, again, maybe is a bit of a surprise to be on this list uh, if you look at their tackle situation, because they have very good tackles, uh, you know, Charles Cross and Abraham Lucas. Maybe very good is the wrong term. I guess here's the thing about the Seahawks is – Last year, on paper, these are not great situations because you don't love. I mean, Damian Lewis is fine at left guard, uh, but then you know Evan Brown and Phil Hayes. Uh, I don't know how much you trust those two guys. So you don't love the interior as a whole. But if Charles Cross can step up and be what we expected him to be when they drafted him ninth overall, uh, and Abraham Lucas, I thought was pretty good last year. Uh, if those two guys can just come in and be good tackles, well, even if you don't have the best interior, you can make that work. Which is why I don't have it super high on this list. But yeah, there's there's some issues here especially on the inside. Number eight, the New Orleans Saints, who are, listen, got Ryan Ramchek at right tackle. He's very good. You have uh, Trevor Penning at left tackle, who is a question mark, I would say. He's, you know, young player who, uh, you know, had very little playing time in his rookie year. I, I thought looked good in it. He was the first round pick from a year ago. Uh, so is there potential? Absolutely. And if he hits, this offensive line would look pretty good because, you know, Eric McCoy had that one really good rookie year, hasn't shown uh, a ton. Anders, uh, Andres Pete has kind of been up and down his whole career. He's had a lot of inconsistencies. And I'd say Cesar Ruiz has not yet lived up to being a first round pick. But every single player on this line has at least potential. And Ryan Ramchek's great, although maybe didn't have his best year last year. Uh, you know, there's a chance this could be a very good offensive line, but there's so many question marks. That's why I have it on the list. Number seven, it's the Giants who, I don't know if I'm quite as low on the Giants offensive line as others are, but I still have it as my seventh worst offensive line. I think it has potential to actually get off this list altogether for the first time in seemingly forever if they can, if Evan Neal can step up. Neal was he had a rough rookie year. There's no getting around it. He was tough as a rookie, but I kind of thought he would be more of a developmental guy. And as people keep breaking up, the Giants have a great example of a guy looking rough as a rookie and then turning into a great player in Andrew Thomas at left tackle, who's incredible. Uh, now, if that happens, I still don't know how much I love the uh, Joshua uh, Enzu and also John Michael Smith, uh, you know, those two guys on the interior. Right guard Mike Markonowski, he's fine. Uh, but I still don't know if I love this offensive line, but it'd probably be in the mediocre range if Evan Neal can take that next step and if he can become an elite player well then you have two elite tackles that's probably better than mediocre number six on my list is the buffalo bills who have a lot of guys who can maybe be solid for them uh which you know i like dean dawkins a lot as the left tackle he's probably their one that you feel like okay no that he's just a good uh player for them i guess maybe uh you know connor mcgovern might be the other guy the left guard former jet player. Uh, Mitch Morse, Ryan Bates, and Spencer Brown, who are currently what appear to be the three guys who will be starting from center to right tackle. Uh, don't They're not a disaster either way. Uh, I don't know if I love this either. And, you know, again, uh, Dean Dawkins, I think, is good. I, I think there's just some concerns about how good of an offensive line is this really. And I think they could have really no clear strength, which could really hurt them in the running game, especially. We kind of view this as it's a weak league sport. And to some degree it is, to a large degree it is, but still having good players and having a you know stars still help out with that as well. The one other thing I'm interested though in is they drafted Osiris Torrance, who uh, isn't currently listed as a starter, but I'm sure will get playing time and could help them out a lot. So not in the bottom five, but I, I don't love the more Spates and Brown, uh, you know, right half of that offensive line that concerns me. 
Next up on the list is the Commanders, who currently only have one player who's scheduled who, who uh, to play in the position he played last year for the Commanders. Again, this year, uh, that's Charles Leno uh, Jr., the tackle, who's good. I, I like him uh, a good amount. Now, Samuel Cosby, uh, you know, he, he played last year at uh, right tackle. Looks like he's going to be right guard now as they added Andrew Wiley, who, again, is, is solid. I, I don't dislike Andrew Wiley, but he's not necessarily a star or anything like that either so you got three play players who I, I don't know you know Leno's solid but then you know Wiley's fine he's not a disaster same thing with Samuel Cosme fine not a disaster uh but then you have uh, you know, Ricky Stromberg looks like he's gonna start he's you know the 98th overall pick uh, as a rookie that seems a bit concerning I don't know how much I trust uh, Nick Gates necessarily so there's some concerns and similar to the Bills not a lot of stars to make up for those concerns so they're at five Number four, we have the Rams. The Rams who do have a, you know, a Steve Villa who was, what, picked 37th. They want him to start, which isn't a disaster necessarily having a guy, you know, 37 start for at left guard. But at the same time, you do kind of look at this as well and say, well, he wasn't projected to go anywhere near that. So, uh, yes, in theory, that would be good. But how good is he really going to be? I like Rob Havenstein uh, a good amount and uh, Joseph Noteboom for the other tackle. I think is a solid player. Uh, I don't really hate that. But again, Brian Allen has kind of had his ups and downs as a player. Uh, you know, Coleman Shelton, not sure how confident I feel in him. So another offensive line where just maybe they can patch it together and be fine and not have an issue but if like one injury and they're screwed and there's going to be injuries it's it's football and you're playing offensive line number three I have the Jaguars here some people might be higher on them than me I don't love Cam Robinson at left tackle uh too much uh you know I I just don't and Anton Harrison they drafted a lot, of people, a lot of people really liked Anton Harrison. I just wasn't one of them, so I could be wrong on that. That's maybe just a me thing that's coloring this a little bit. But I don't love their tackle situation. And for the interior, okay, Brandon Sheriff should be good, but he wasn't great last year. So I'm hopeful that that was just a fluke, and he'll be good this year. Uh, the other guard uh, that's scheduled to be in, and again, this is just all, you know, what I'm reading is supposed to be the starters. Obviously, it's all subject to change, but uh, Ben Barch, uh, the other, uh, you know, guard who isn't a disaster, but isn't a star player either. And Luke Fortner, the uh, rookie last year who did not play well as a rookie, uh, can he kind of step up? We'll be, we'll see, but as a whole, uh, you know, the bright spots aren't that bright, and there's some holes here as well. So this is a tough looking offensive line, in my opinion. Number two, I am am going with the Cardinals, who, you know, have addressed this to some degree. They uh, drafted Paris Johnson Jr., uh, who uh, looks like he's going to play guard for them to start, which is interesting because I thought part of what they liked about him uh, was that he could be tackle. So that's a little confusing. Um, you know, you have uh, uh, Hegelty uh, Froholt, sorry if I mispronounced that name, at center, who I think should be a, a solid, a fine center for them. Uh, you have, you know, the, the tackle tandem of DJ Humphreys and Kev Calvin Beecham. That, that's not a disaster, and the, the Will Hernandez stuff isn't a disaster either necessarily. I don't know if you could argue that maybe this one is they don't necessarily have the uh, the glaring hole that the Jaguars do, but the Jaguars have that hole at center. And like I said, I think there's some real uh, real questions uh, here uh, in, in this situation with the with the Cardinals. Of uh, I just don't know how much. Again, I don't love their center situation. Is Paris Johnson going to come in and be great right away? Is he going to take some time? I don't know. I just don't love this offensive line as a whole. Although I will say it's not a disaster. Uh, either at any specific position. It's more of an accumulation of the five players. And finally, last but not least, uh, the Titans. The Titans are here uh, who, uh, you know, I, I don't know. You have Andre Dillard, who I guess is the fine flyer, former first-round pick. You had you spent a first-round pick on Peter Skowronski, who, you know, I, re I really like that selection. Looks like he's going to play guard. I like that. I think he'll be a good guard for them. I think that was smart to help you know, get that better. But, you know, uh, looks like the other three guys currently uh, would be uh, Aaron Brewer, uh, Daniel uh, Brunskill, who I think could be good. He could be another guy I could see being a solid starter for them. Uh, and Nicholas uh, Petit uh, Friere, who, I don't know, uh, I think that that's kind of the issue. The, the guard and right tackle will seem like that could be a tough one with Brewer and uh, Petit Friere, who... It looks like you have a couple holes on this roster, and again, you're kind of relying on Skaronski to come in and be great right away. Don't know if that's going to work. Dillard could be a mess. That's totally possible. So there's a chance that, I mean, there's a chance four out of these five offensive linemen are rough 
entering this next year. That's a concern. Uh, and, you know, again, the guy who we're expecting to be their best player hasn't even played in the NFL yet. That's concerning. They're number one on this list. That's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.